Hey, 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 everybody, and welcome to another episode here of the Content Creators University. I'm very, very excited that we're here. Well, every week we have the Content Creators University, and now, of course, we have our other show that we do, which is called What's in My Studio. I want to welcome all of you guys uh, that are joining us right now. We have a lot to cover today. A lot of times in this uh, show, What's in My Studio, we look at the behind the scenes of things that we need to learn when it comes to to technology, um, to grow our brand, our live video presence, our speaking, virtual speaking platform, and those type of things to, you know, impact people with our, with our virtual presence. But right now we're looking at what's behind the book, right? Um, I just released a book, if you didn't know, which is called The Live Stream Blueprint. And I'm honored to tell you that it became quickly a number one Amazon bestseller. And in this video today, what we're talking about is the things that you can implement. So you also can position your book to potentially become a bestseller. And also, what are the things that I've learned, the do's and don'ts? Um, there's a lot to go over into this episode. So stay with me. Don't go anywhere, family. Let's hit it. Let's go. All right, all right, family, like I was just saying, we are, um, you know, here live today. So, so excited to go over this with you guys. And uh, right now we're live in multiple, on, on multiple platforms, right? So uh, let me know in the comment section below where you're joining us from. I'm looking down. Uh, whenever you see me look down means that I'm looking at Instagram because we're also live on Instagram. Shout out to the folks that are joining us on Instagram. Hey, Don Howard, how you doing, family? Uh, thanks for letting me know. If you have any questions while we're having this conversation, do not hesitate Put that in the comment section so that we can go ahead and cover that today. Like I said, we have a lot to cover. If you want to write your book, right, you have to watch this video because we're about to cover everything you can think of when it comes down to self-publishing your book and positioning your book so that it can be a success. And what I'm, we're talking about, well, um, you guys know we're talking about you leveraging, right, writing that book so that you can uh, grow a premium brand, right? Um, if you understand, if you have a book, it opens a whole new world for you, right? And there's so many new opportunities. And right now we're Q4 of 2023. So we're talking about this so that you can take this moving forward and level up your brand, impact and transform your competition because that's what I do for the folks that are joining us for the first time. If you didn't know, allow me to introduce myself. My name is JP High Tech. I'm a global branding and media expert. Also, of course, number one, Amazon bestseller of my new book, The Live Stream Blueprint. And I'm very honored to tell you, family, that I do this every week to help you, to empower you, to give you the tips, tricks, and solutions so that you also can dominate and kill your competition. I'm honored to tell you that I'm the founder of a, you know, media agency located in the center of Tennessee, more in a little bit, um, but that's what I do. So um, let's go ahead and dive into today's conversation. I want to go ahead and give a shout out to the folks that are joining us here live. Uh, hey, what's good? First Lady Cree, what's good? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here in the comment section. And look at that. I have Dr. MJ Mary McCoy. Connor, what's good? Thanks for being here in the comment section. We appreciate you guys being here with us. And again, like I'm saying, if you have any questions, feel free. Put it in the comment section while we're covering all this. And uh, just to let you guys know real quick, all right, real quick, if you did not know this, I want you to know, um, if you are an aspiring author, right, this video is for you. Whether you're an aspiring author or you're already an author, but you really want to write a bestseller or you really want to grow your brand uh, with your next manuscript that you'll be releasing raw. Or if you're just, you know, a content creator, well, this is for you. If you live in this tech, uh, you know, uh, powered world today, let me let you know something. You need to take the time and watch this. Um, take note because we're about to cover so much and I'm very, very excited to cover this with you guys today. Look at that. I got my man the one and only charles jackson what's good brother appreciate you being here uh what an honor it's been a minute that we haven't ha had charles here um always always a blessing seeing you you know pull up uh to the show here and uh let's go ahead and dive it just let you guys know charles is also an author uh check him out he released an amazing book that i want to encourage all of you guys to go ahead and support right go ahead and get it today's available on amazon shout out to you charles jackson thanks for being here all right family like I said, we are talking about 
We want to release our book, right? We really want to release our book, but there's so much that we need to know, we need to implement. If not, uh, we may release our book and find out that it's really not um, selling like we hope it would, right? Um, and so very, very honored to share what I've learned in my journey with you guys. And look at that, Charles. Uh, so honored that you're ready to learn. Um, that's one thing that I love about you, Charles. He's, even though he's a leader, right? He's always open to learn. And that's what I always say, right? We are always going to be open to learn. And you guys know our motto, right? On this channel, the day you stop learning, you stop growing, right? And I would say you never know that 1% thing that can allow you to really skyrocket to the next level and really dominate your competition with your brand, right? So we want to release our book, right? And so there's so much that I've learned. Um, a lot of you guys do not know that uh, before releasing this book that became a bestseller, I actually released a different book that's I had zero sales. Did I say zero? <laughs> Let me repeat, before I released this book, right, I released another book under a different name. I went on YouTube and I took the time to study all the strategies. I took even private courses, right, from some of those amazing YouTube uh, content creators teaching people how to do this. And so I implemented that, right, because I wanted to see if the things that I've learned from them will work. Family, nothing worked. Zero sales. Now, of course, um, I could have gotten, you know, four or five sales from friends and family members. For me, I don't, I don't really count those, right? Because I mean, they're biased, right? Those are family members. They'll go ahead and support you regardless of whether it's good or not, or whether they, they'll just go ahead and buy it just because it's you. I don't count those. Zero sales, family. And I do not want you to make the same mistake. If not, you'll be struggling, right? Uh, and so we want to really learn here because I've learned and I took a step back and implemented different strategies, right? And when I did that, I was honored to see that 24 hours before the release of my book, it was number one. And here's the thing, family, my book did not just go number one, it stayed number one for several, I repeat, several consecutive days. That is what we want to achieve with this video today, right? And so we got to jump onto it. Yes, you're right, Charles. The day you stop learning, you stop growing. Um, and that is our model here. So let's go ahead and then jump into um, the things that we want to go ahead and learn in regards to us really growing and, and, and jumping into. I don't want to waste any time. If you didn't know, I love me to introduce myself. My name is JP High Tech. I'm a global branding and media expert. Like I said, Currently, I added to my title, number one, Amazon best-selling author, and I run a media agency called Perfect Zone Productions. We have our studios located here in the state of Tennessee, and what we do is help individual small business owners, entrepreneurs, you know, um, build a premium brand, and what we, we do that by, you know, helping you guys leverage high-end videography, photography, uh, you know, live video content creation technology, and visibility to leverage strategies with specific type of marketing that really work right because um today there's a lot of people that make a lot of noise and you know what i say on this channel um we don't just want likes and comments right we really want to convert right and converting for me is somebody that takes action with your brain somebody that spends the money and purchases your product or services that's what i call converting right and that's what we're looking for um here shout out to the folks that are joining us on instagram hey robert what's good thanks for being here with us on instagram if you didn't know family we are also live on instagram right now the handle is at jp high tech so let's go ahead and jump into this right now now here's the thing family Everybody needs a book, okay? Everyone needs a book today. We live in a world today that um, your intellectual property, if you have it, you need to put that into a book, right? What are you talking about, JP? Well, let me tell you why every leader needs to write a nonfiction book. Why am I talking about nonfiction specifically today? Even though a lot of the things we'll talk about today will also apply to your fiction book, nonfiction, right, is one of the best ways for you to position your brand, right? And let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you want to be paid for your expertise? Do you want to be paid for your expertise? Because <laughs> I know, I know I want to be paid. I want to make money from my expertise, right? So do you? Want to be respected as an authority in your field? Do you want to be uh, paid as a speaker? 
you heard me, as a speaker, for the folks that are, you know, leaders, uh, content creators, you know, amazing folks, yeah, amazing folks that are doing, um, really moving the needle when it comes down to leadership world, right? Just like my man, Charles Jackson. A lot of us, we would like to be paid as a speaker. We would like to be approached, right? And when I say paid, I'm talking paid. 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 or more, right? Where people truly, not people that we know, but people that discover our work and really would like to invite us, pay our trip, pay our hotel, pay our time so that we can get on the stage and speak, right? My book already opened a lot of opportunities for me. As a matter of fact, I'm speaking in January at Cap Shobian Live. If you follow me on social media, you know that I will be there in person in Orlando, Florida, and I'll be, I'll be speaking there. It's a two-day event, and after that, we're also going to Podfest. Family, if you really want this, your book, your nonfiction book will allow you to do that, right? Do you want to build a premium brand? Do you want to expand your network? Do you want to, uh, you know, to make passive income? Because if you position your book and you do it right and it becomes a bestseller, then it's guaranteed you will make passive income, <laughs> right? Do you want to become a living legacy? A lot of folks don't think about that aspect of things, right? Becoming a living legacy. Charles Jackson said, yes. I love to add free value to people's lives, but I want to be paid for my expertise too. That is the thing here, right? It's good to give free stuff. It's good to, you know, uh, empower other folks, but we got to be paid for our intellectual property. And so we have to do it right so that we can really be paid, family. Right? So let me ask you again. Do you want to become a living legacy? Do you want to expand your visibility? If you answer yes to all those things, right, then you know that you need to write your own nonfiction book. But not just any book, family. You need to write your best-selling book. And that's what we're, I'm about to teach you today. What did I specifically do that worked? And how can you do exactly the same thing, right? Free of charge, family. I'm giving it to you free of charge. So you can implement this. And level up and really destroy your competition. That's what we're talking about today, right? Because this is what happened to me. I went on YouTube and I researched. And you'll find bits and pieces of information left and right at different places. But it was hard for me to really find all of this in one specific place. Like one video, right? That would just give me everything I need. I, I didn't find it anywhere. That, which is why I'm here. I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and put it out there. Dr. Mary Mama, uh, Mary. Dr. Mary M.J. McConnor said we have to get paid for our intellectual property 100%. Yes, ma'am. Right? Hey, Don Howard, we have to get paid. This is everything. All right. So let's go ahead and, and, and go into this, right? Let's go into this because this is not those type of uh, workshops where I'm just motivating you and not giving you the, the real sauce. No. Right. So let's talk about how to position your new book for success. The first thing that I want you to write down is leverage your expertise. Leverage your expertise, because that is one of the most important things. Right. Because I have people right now. Right. That are in my inbox. Right. I have people in my email that are emailing me, that are ready to pay me to get on a pay consultation, right? Because they want to release a book and they really want to position their book for success. Well, the first thing, and I will tell you, if you want to release a book, is leverage your expertise. What does that mean? I'm not talking about necessarily what you went co to college for. It could be that, but not necessarily that. Ask yourself one question. What is that one thing? are those few things that you find yourself helping people with most of the time. Like when people are contacting you, uh, most of the time there is, uh, you have those few things that people usually ask you to help them with, right? That is something that you want to potentially write a book on. Because there's a reason why people keep coming to you for that specific reason. And if on top of that, you have a professional certification in that subject matter, even better. Right? Because an expertise is something 
right, that you've studied, right? You know the ins and out of that thing. You have experience in it, right? You can help others with your eyes closed. You really know it inside out, outside in, right? That, that is what you're an expert in, right? And you want to leverage that knowledge that you have. Why? Because remember, we're not just talking about just writing a book. Just, I'm an author. I just want to release a book. No. We're not just talking about, oh, uh, I love talking about basketball, right? I love that topic. So let me write about it. No. We want to leverage our book to expand our brand, to increase our brand's net worth, to leverage the book so that we can start making money, so people can start paying us for our expertise, so we can get paid for true speaking engagements, right? So that people, organizations, really do not have any doubt whenever they're comparing us to others, right? And saying, who should they invite this year, right? As the expert on the panel, as the expert they should pay for. They're always looking for new speakers every year, right? So we're not talking about fiction right now. Later, you can write your fiction books and all those fun projects whenever you start making that money, right? But let's position our brand the right way. So that is very crucial. So you have expertise in it. You know people have a need because the book needs to solve a problem. So people have a need, which is why they keep coming to you, right, and asking you the questions over and over. And you find your time, you, you find yourself helping them a lot of the times, right? So now, guess what? There's a whole lot of other people in the world that also want to learn the same thing. And now you will position yourself answering that question for them so that they can really get your help. Okay, so leverage your expertise. Now, a lot of folks miss this right here, right? Choosing the best title for your book. It might seem an easy, right? You, somebody might say in the comment, well, of course, JP, you got to pick the best title. But hold on a second. You need to include an SEO tag in your title. Remember, we're talking about how to position your book so you can start selling a lot. Everything that I'm talking about, I'm about to explain it to you, right? What do you mean, JP, position your book, uh, including SEO title, the SEO tag in the book title? Well, let's talk about it real quick because I really want to make sure that we are on the same page, right? You know the name of my book. My book is called The Live Stream Blueprint. But pay attention. The book's name is The Live Stream Blueprint blueprint right starting and scaling your business with live video now this book right and i'm not promoting it i'm simply telling you giving you an example using my own book which is uh, simpler for me to do right this book teaches the person that reads how to start and scale their business leveraging live video now i could have used any other title in there but one thing is important what are are you talking about in the book, right? So you have to include that in the title of the book, which I'm talking about using live stream, right? So I made sure to call in the title of the book, put that the live stream blueprint. Why? Because I know people, whenever they go on Amazon, they'll be searching for books that talk about live streaming. So what happens here is that if you add a tag, of what people will be searching for in, rela in relation to your book, in the title of the book, the title, right, the book itself becomes an instant recommendation for Amazon because people don't know you. So you want to think about it like a video search, right? When you go on, on, on YouTube, for example, you want to search for something. Um, you want to learn, I don't know, how to become a professional speaker, right? So if I were to write a book, on teaching people how to become a professional speaker, guess what? I'll make sure in the title of the book, I have professional speaking or professional speaker. You see what I'm, I, I, you're doing there? Because that instantly will allow people to discover your book. Uh, Amazon does something is they have an AI, right? And so their AI will suggest to people um, the books that are close to what they're searching for. Of course, there is the category in which you put your book, well, which we're about to talk about in a little bit. But what is easier for you to be discovered, not just on um, Amazon, I'm talking Google, 
YouTube, all of that, right? You want to put that in the title of your book. And it becomes naturally, organically, you're bringing traffic to your book without you even have to struggle there, right? So that is one part that people miss. They want to have fancy titles. I've seen uh, some of my amazing peers, um, some of their books, right, have a title and the subject matter is actually talking about something else, you know, and you want to be careful doing that, right? Um, and if, even if you want to write about, for example, um, a triumph uh, uh, from, you know, from struggle to victory, for example, right? And I wanted to talk about branding. Well, it will be hard for somebody to easily find my book because how do I know in the title of the book that's talking about branding? But if I include that in the title now, it makes it easy for the person before they even purchase it. The goal is for you to, you know, be avail available and discovered by millions of people. Okay. So very important family. Let's make sure we have a tag friendly, you know, um, element in the title of our book. All right, family, let me know in the comment section if you have any question um, or any comment. I appreciate that. Let me know where you're joining from. I'm looking everywhere. I see you guys joining. Shout out to the folks that are joining us in my uh, Apple TV, actually my uh, Roku TV, I meant. My Roku TV application. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us there every single week. In case you did not know, JP High Tech TV is available on Roku. Go ahead and download the TV application. The name is JP High Tech TV or all you got to do is go on your iOS, right? And download the mobile application right now. Um, download the app. And the app name is JP High Tech. TV is the name of the app, right? Uh, go ahead and download it right now. Um, and you will not regret it because we're here to provide you guys with a whole lot of content, support, and the things that you need so you can really impact, all right? So let's go ahead and continue on the conversation here that we have. Um, in regards to what we're talking about. So now, number two, what you want to do is have two to three trusted proofreaders, right? Have two to three trusted proofreaders. Appreciate that, Charles Jackson says. Uh, great point. Uh, that's awesome. I appreciate you engaging in the comment section, Charles. Really, really appreciate that. Look at that, my man, Chris Bryant. What's good? <laughs> What's good, Chris? He said, get a look at the behind the scenes angle. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you, man. We try to inspire the folks uh, here. That's the name of the show. What's in my studio? So we show folks what's behind the scenes here, how we're doing the things that we do, right? And today we're talking about what's behind the book, right? Uh, he says, straight fire tonight, man. Taking lots of notes. Appreciate you, uh, Chris. Honored. And if you didn't know, family, go ahead and follow Chris on LinkedIn. Chris is a, an amazing, amazing professional in the cinematography world as well. Uh, does amazing stuff. He was a guest in the past year on, the, uh, on one of our other podcasts that we have called the Content Creators University family. Check him out. You will not. You will not regret it. Chris is amazing. Um, all right, family. You need to have two to three trusted proofreaders. Now, family, if, you, if you're watching this right now, you will see that I put on the screen, get true, honest feedback, not fake praises. This is crucial, family. You're really trying to, uh, you know, expand your business, okay? So when I'm talking about getting two to three trusted proofreaders, you're looking for people, right, that you know will not hold back and give you honest feedback, you know, constructive criticism, that will really take the time to read the entire completed, you know, manuscript that you put together and listen to what they're telling you. OK. Can they easily understand your point or are, do you have some areas in the book that are not the greatest or um, you need to rephrase certain things or you need to add more context to the things that you're talking about? Well, pay attention. And the reason why you need to have two to three is because different people will notice different things, right? And so you want to see what are people noticing, all right? And that should be a, a feedback for you to go back and correct everything, okay? Again, don't go for the best friends that are just about to cheer you up and tell you how of an amazing job you did. Go to the ones that will generally give you uh, those, you know, feedback. And if you don't have any, um, you can pay for proofreaders, um, you know, and they'll take the time to read your, your book and give you that constructive, uh, you know, criticism and feedback for you to really improve what you wrote. Um, because we really want that uh, genuine feedback so that we can 
you know, take note and deliver something of high quality to the folks that will be bound the book, right? Because if you don't, once you release the book, well, people are going to give you terrible reviews. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you don't want that, right? Um, and, and that's the last thing you want to do. So go ahead and do that. Now, let's move forward to point number three. Your book will be judged by its cover. <laughs> family, I know they say you don't judge a book by its cover, but I'm sorry to let you know, family, your book will be judged by its cover. Okay? The presentation of your book is everything, family. So please don't hold back. This is, these are one of the few things, because I know today you have so many solutions, right? DIY solutions out there, um, like Canva and you name it, which are fantastic. But this is what I'm, I'm going to tell you, family. You can do it yourself or you can hire a professional. It all depends on how serious you are about your project. If you are not a professional graphic designer, take the time to hire a professional graphic designer. And let me go ahead and give you guys some places where you can um, hire some good professional graphic designers without breaking the bank. Um, so one place is going to 99designs.com, right? If you're watching the podcast, I'm showing it to you. You go to 99designs.com, right? You can put uh, a bid out there and hire somebody to help you create a professional cover for your book. You can also go to another place called designcrowd.com, right? Those are places where you can go and not break the bank, right? Designcrowd.com is a great place for you to go and hire a designer for your book without breaking the bank. Of course, you can go to the traditional Fiverr. Now, Fiverr, I will go there with a you know, uh, with some reservation. Okay. What am I talking about? Well, what we're talking about designing your book on Fiverr, you can find amazing professional designers, but here's the thing, family. You're not just, you're not just looking for somebody that's going to design a nice cover. You're looking for somebody that can embrace the vision of what you're trying to do that understands branding, right? A graphic designer, is not somebody that necessarily understands branding. And so whenever you're hiring that designer, make sure that designer understands your brand. Not just look at the title of what you're submitting and design something. No, but goes back, looks at what you have, your personal business, right? The things that you have in place and all those type of things. And whenever they're designing your book cover, they're keeping that in mind, knowing what you're all about, right? What are the subject that you really... Um, built your expertise around, right? Um, and all that needs to be reflected, the mood, your um, presentation, your colors, your overall brand, um, you know, um, subject matter. Um, really, all those things, right, need to resonate in your book because your book that we're talking about here should be an extension of your brand. Because ultimately, you're using that to leverage your company, you leverage your brand, and really expand the footprint of your brand, which is very important. So don't just hire a graphic designer, hire somebody that understands branding and that can really design something that when they put that in the ecosystem of everything or your digital portfolio for your brand, it doesn't stand like a sore thumb, but it falls within smoothly, right? Something that really um, is cohesive. That's what I'm talking about, okay? That's very, very important. And also whenever you're doing that, understand that, you're not just looking for just a graphic designer for the outside of your book, but also for the inside, which is called formatting, right? Try to see if you can get somebody that can help you format the inside of your book as well, because that's very, very important. Um, I know I have a lot of DIY followers, people that follow this channel specifically. They're able to do certain things themselves. And we're, I'm about to talk to you about what I use, right, to create the format of my book, talking about the inside, right? How everything should be laid out, uh, the titles of the chapters, the table of content, all those things, right? So that it is approved whenever you're uh, uploading your book for the distribution. And also what I've used to create the ebook, right? I'm giving you guys all the sauce today so that you guys can go ahead and do that without any problems, okay? If you have any questions, again, 
go ahead and put it in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to, you know, check it out and answer your questions. And if you're following us on Instagram right now, let us know what do you have as a question. Or if you've learned anything, let us know what is that one thing that you've learned so far um, in this presentation. Uh, that gives me uh, that feedback and allows me to keep delivering, right, every week to you guys so we can keep growing together, all right? So let's continue the conversation here, all right, family? Uh, very, very important. Now, uh, let me see right here. And other things that we definitely want to look into, okay, is now that we've determined um, the right graphic designer. And of course, if you want to hire somebody like me or my company to create the graphics for you, you can do that as well, all right? Um, but you got to hire somebody, family. Um, if you're not a professional graphic designer, make sure you hire a professional to help you create something that will stand out. And also one thing that you want to do, you want to put your book design side by side with other books, okay? To see if you place it, does it stand out? Does it hold? Does it hold its weight? If you feel like it's not really holding its weight, you may want to go back to the drawing board and get some things adjusted. Because remember, people that are going to purchase your book, they're going to purchase that in a specific category. So they will compare that um, to other books. Again, family, I'm taking a lot of time on this because this is part of what's going to make your book successful, okay? This is very important. They will judge it before reading it by the cover that you're holding. And so taking the time to spend extra money here is crucial. And also understanding that there are different book sizes, okay? Are you going to um, create in an 8 by 5 by 8 by 5 or 6 by 9 right? Or 5 by 5 you name it. Now, one thing that I'll tell you that they mo the most popular or most common right size and that's the size of my book as well is six by nine and when i say most common is because there are some distributors that do not support anything but only six by nine so keep that in mind whenever you're releasing your book because that's one thing that i had to scratch my head on i was wondering which will be the best size and i didn't want it to be too tiny in my hand I wanted something that was a good size, right? And I have big, large hands, family. So I wanted something that was a good size when I held it in my hand. It's not a tiny book. And I wanted to offer the client something premium, you know, when they purchased it. And so six by nine was the most popular one. Um, and is a decent size. If you purchase my book, you'll see that it's a very, very decent size. And um, I have the hardcover um, and the paperback and all that. So you think about that. But six by nine is the most popular, right? That you want to go for now, if you don't just google it depending on the type of book that you're writing if you want to go for a different size so you can create that uh, both the graphics and the formatting accordingly to that and you have your files properly without scratching your head right all right family so now Let's continue here. Like I said, I will be sharing with you uh, the DIY solutions so that you can also format your book easily without having to use technical softwares like InDesign or anything like that. All right. I'll be giving you that. Now, let me tell you something, family. You are your own publisher. Again, this is for self-publishing your book, right? You are your own publisher, family. OK, so if you have a company, if you have an LLC, if you have anything, whenever you're publishing your book, you are your own publisher. Your own company will be listed as a publisher of the book. So what you need to look for, you need to identify your distributor. OK, and talking about distributors, there are quite a few distributors out there. But out of so many distributors that you find online, personally, based on my experience, I identify three top distributors right? That will allow you to make your book available literally everywhere. Like my book is available on uh, Walmart, Amazon. Oh, it looks like some things are happening right here in my studio. Uh, Walmart, Amazon, um, you know, no, Barnes and Noble. I mean, my book is everywhere, family, right? So if you're self-publishing, you really want to make it available everywhere as possible. My book is also available in um, libraries, right? I wanted my book available in libraries so that if anybody were to go to any library, they can order my book from there. Well, in order for your book to be, to be available in all those places, right, across the world, internationally, there is a process. And I'm about to show you right now, okay? So the first um, place that you want to go to, family, um, like I mentioned there, is Ingram's Parks. Ingram's Parks is where you want to go to. And the website is ingramsparks.com 
Okay. Now here's the thing. Whenever you go to IngramSparks.com, you can publish your book for free on Ingram Sparks. Um, they allow you to publish your physical manuscript and your audiobook. One thing I'll tell you is do not publish your audiobook through Ingram Sparks. There's a strategy that I'm about to show you that works better. Okay. Use Ingram Sparks just for the hardcover for your book. Not the not anything else, but just a hardcover. Okay. Now, you also have Amazon, right? KDP. Okay, so leverage KDP as well by going to kdp.amazon.com. If you have an Amazon account, you'll be able to log in to your Amazon account and publish your book here. Now, the third one, which is amazing, is called Draft to Digital. Draft to Digital, so draft number two, digital.com. Based on my experience, these are the top three distributors that allowed me to have my book literally everywhere, right? Because remember, you want to be discovered every single place people go to for your book. So again, let me repeat, Ingram Sparks, IngramSparks.com, right? KDP.Amazon.com, drive to digital.com. And there are quite a, there's a specific way to leverage all three to distribute your book. I'm about to share that in a little bit. Okay. But I want you to take note of these three because these are crucial. Okay. Now there's one thing you will hear a lot. If you research in regards to releasing your own book is you getting your ISBN right now in order for me not to be very technical, your ISBN, I'm fixing my headphones here. Your ISBN is your unique identifier for your book. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure if you're a current author, you've run into this problem where you go to one platform, right? Let's say you were to, uh, you decide to purchase your ISBN from, let's say, a specific place. And I'm about to show you different places where you can purchase that. And then you try to use that same ISBN on Amazon, for example. Um, <laughs> it's not going to work. They're going to reject it. Right. But there's a way to uh, make all this work. All right. Chris is saying the amount of cheer, uh, tactical information you're giving is blowing my mind. Thanks, JP. My pleasure. My pleasure. That's what this is all about. Right. And so what you want to do is you want to determine, do I want to use paid ISBN or free ISBN? I'm about to get into that in a minute. But if you want to purchase your ISBN, OK, there are two places that I personally will recommend where your book Right. That identifier that is at the back of your book. Right. For the folks that, again, um, stay with me, family. This video is for beginners and advanced, um, you know, writers as well. So I'm taking the time to cover everything. Your ISBN, if you look at the back of your book, right, you see there's this barcode right here. Right. And this barcode identifies your book. And the, every distributor requires you to have that. Right. This barcode at the bottom here. And so I know if you pick any book up, you'll see that at the bottom. And now here's the thing. The first thing you want to do is if you want to use your own custom ISBN, meaning ISBN codes that you own, you want to purchase it from um, two places that I highly recommend. And let me go ahead and show you these places so you can check them out. And so you want to go here. Let me go ahead and show you. So you want to go to this website here. And this is Boker, right? This is Boker. And the website, uh, I'll give it to you, is Boker.com. B-O-W-K-E-R, right? B-O-W-K-E-R.com. Boker. Dot com, right, is a very reputable and established ISBN um, provider. And you can come right here. You can click on order and purchase your ISBNs. Or you can use one that is more cost friendly, right? This is more affordable than Boker. And this is ISBNservices.com. Now, I personally purchased my ISBNs from ISBNservices.com, okay? This is what I went and purchased my ISBN. You spent about 25 bucks or something like that to purchase one, uh, 20, 25 bucks, which is very cost effective compared to Boker, right? But honestly, these are the two that I can personally recommend. Now, if you Google, you see several other ones. I've heard of people talking about not being able to 
uh, get their paid ads being to be identified by a specific publisher or di- I mean distributor, right? So you want to be careful where you purchase your ISBN from. Now, here's what I will tell you, which is amazing. You actually don't have to be purchasing any ISBN. So if I have to redo, right, all of this, I will not be spending my money on any ISBN. Here's what you do. First, you want to go to Ingram Sparks. Okay. Again, follow this order because in this way, you will be able to really leverage this in the order of publishing. Okay. There's an order of publishing that I want to share with you. In order to have your book available pretty much everywhere, literally everywhere, right? You want to follow this order. The first thing you want to do, go on IngramSparks.com. Create a free account here. Okay. Create a free account on IngramSparks.com. Upload your manuscript and everything here. And select, please pay attention here. This is very, very crucial. The day of release. Okay. So let's say, for example, you want to release, let's say, December 24th. Right. I'm just taking that as an example. Let's say you want your book to be released on December 24th. Whenever you select the date of release, okay, select the date of release December 24th. It might be a little confusing, but pay attention. There's another date in Ingram Sparks. It's going to ask you and tell you what is the date that you want to make the, you know, book available. What they call av- available date is the pre-order date. Let me repeat. When you upload your book in Ingram Sparks, you have to select the date you want the book to be distributed, like available for, you know, purchase, right? And then the second date you put there, they call it available date, but in reality, that is the date for pre-order. So if you want to set your book for pre-order before the actual available date, remember, in this case, this example is, we want the book to be available on December 24th. If we want people to pre-order the book, right, it is best practice for the pre-order to be seven days, right, ahead. So seven days before December 24th, you select that date and you select that in Ingram Sparks as the available date, which is reality, is the pre-order date. You click distribute everywhere. What you want to do, only make your hardcover There's a strategy here, family. Follow me. Only make your hardcover available through Ingram Sparks. They will offer you a free ISBN. Say yes. Get their free ISBN. So Ingram Sparks as a distributor will now distribute your book based on the ISBN they've assigned to the book they're distributing of you. That's fine. Remember, you want the book to be worldwide available on December 24th. And you put it down seven days ahead for pre-order. After you're done with Ingram Sparks, step number two, you want to go ahead and visit kdp.amazon.com. If you have a company, log into this Amazon account with your company account. Remember, your company will be the publisher of your book. If you log into Amazon with your personal Amazon account, you will not be able to change it later. If you do not have an Amazon business account, go ahead and create a free Amazon business account. Again, this is 100% free, family. Create a free Amazon business account. Then come to kdp.amazon.com and go ahead and log in with your Amazon account, okay? Because you want your Amazon account to be the publisher of the book. I've seen and I've heard, I've watched a lot of videos where people use their personal Amazon account. And later when they try to put their company name for some reason, sometimes Amazon will delay the book or will ask for more information or will block them and and a whole lot of stuff. So if you want a seamless execution, follow this process. Okay. So this is what you do. You go ahead and do this. You upload your book on Amazon. Okay. Okay. Now, when you do it on Amazon, remember, Amazon will also ask you for your paid as being. Simply tell Amazon you want the free one. Now, here on Amazon, you will do, if you wanted multiple versions of the book, I did the hardcover, 
the paperback. So here on Amazon, you will do both. You create the hardcover and the paperback. One thing that I want to tell you, please pay attention. Please, please, please pay attention here. Whenever you're distributing on Amazon, there's an option Amazon has called extended territories. Do not click on that. I repeat, do not click on extended territories on Amazon or extended distribution or something like that, right? Do not do that. Just do the regular distribution on Amazon, okay? If you select extended distribution, they will literally just take the rights and block uh, the other uh, Ingram Sparks from distributing your same book, right? And so Amazon will tell you to choose um, that they won't be able to do it. They'll tell you to go ahead and ask any other uh, distributor to take it off from any other t territories that are available worldwide. But here's the thing. Um, Amazon technically does not have um, a, the ability as of the recording of this video to make your book available in libraries and things like that, like Ingram Sparks will do. And so Ingram Sparks is the favorite when it comes to libraries and bookstores around the world where, you know, you can walk into a Barnes and Noble store and order my book, for example, right? You can walk in Barnes and Noble, right? and order my book and they'll make that available physically well amazon's not going to do that for you but ingram sparks will do that for you right so do not check the extended distribution or extended territories that amazon will offer you just do the regular um you know um, amazon and select uh, amazon you know worldwide like europe united states canada and all the amazon available uh, worldwide make that available there and distribute you know your book through there right very very important Excellent distribution will lock everything down. And look, now we have a confirmation for another author here. Charles Jackson is saying, yes, extended distribution locks you in, in on Amazon. Exactly. Amazon will be <laughs> keeping your book only with them, and that will really limit you. You don't want to do that, okay? So again, go to you know Amazon and distribute it there. Now, after you've done the Amazon, okay, after you've done the Amazon, now step number three, right, you want to go ahead and make your book available now uh, on drive to digital okay drive to digital is where you want to go now step number three okay and i'll give you the website right this is draft to digital.com 100 free account again right here create a free account and go ahead and upload your book here draft to digital will tell you to either upload your paid asbn or they want to give you a free asbn go ahead and say yes to the free asbn Get your free SBN from Drive to Digital, and they will also distribute your book. And here's what's amazing. Now, on Drive to Digital, remember on Amazon, if you wanted to have your book um, available on ebook, right? Make it available on Amazon on KDP on ebook. And now on Drive to Digital, make it available um, as well ebook, right? And they'll distribute everywhere else. Whenever you're selecting the available platforms, um, uncheck Amazon. They'll ask you, where are the places you want your book distributed to? <laughs> I mean, they have pretty much everywhere, right? Uncheck Amazon because you already checked Amazon when you uploaded on Amazon KDP. Now, here's the thing. Let me tell you, family. If you go on Amazon and you want to distribute your book, for ebook, Amazon will ask you if you wanted to make your book available for, you know, um, higher royalties, right? Um, and KDP Select, it, that's... The name of the program, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and some of you guys that are authors can go ahead and put in the comment section. KDP Select. If you do you want your book available, your ebook I'm talking about, if you want the ebook version, right? Available on Apple, Barnes and Noble, I mean you name it everywhere, right? If you want it to be a worldwide distribution of your ebook as well, do not check, <laughs> do not check on Amazon to have it in kdp select don't do that if you do that uh, legally it means you only have to make it available on amazon and you cannot make your ebook available anywhere else okay i didn't check that i made my ebook available everywhere worldwide remember the goal here is to be discovered worldwide and so whenever people are googling us right as a potential speaker or expert in the subject matter we're leveraging the book to establish our brand OK, very important. So here on Draft to Digital, you will upload your ebook here as well. One thing that is amazing about Draft to Digital is um, if you do not have an ebook, 
they can create that for you 100% free with the manuscript, with the PDF version of your manuscript. You upload it here, and they'll make that available for you. Uh, they'll create that for you 100% free, and you have an ebook version of your book here, and you can, you know, go back on Amazon and upload that if you didn't have the ebook. But I'm about to show you a DIY uh, way that you can get all this done yourself without having to pay anybody to format your book um, if you want to go that route, okay? And after you've done that, right, now your book will be available pretty much <laughs> worldwide, like everywhere you can imagine, right, your book will be made available. And that is honestly the best way to do it. Now, family, um, one thing that I want to share with you early out, I know I mentioned um, how you can format your book. Now, I'm using a solution called Atticus. Atticus.io is the website. Atticus.io, okay? The license for Atticus is about $150. Okay, right there, $147. Yeah, about $150. Now, here's, here's the thing. Atticus, for me, is amazing. Now, of course, there's a slight learning curve, but if you really want to save money, if you intend to be releasing more than one book, right, and you really want to have your hands on the formatting aspect, Atticus allows you to format your book and create not only the PDF version of your book, but you can also create the ebook version. This is what I use to create the ebook version of my book and the PDF version of my book. And what is good about this is they have so many templates in here that you can use to design, you know, a very nice layout of your book, right? The way you want to have it italicized and everything. I mean, you name it, right? Um, they have all those things and they, they're they still growing and adding more features to this, right? You can, you know, really write your entire book within Atticus as well or upload your Word document. It's, it's just amazing. It's an amazing tool. And hey, uh, FYI, if you have a business, right, and you want to be charging people to be doing this for them, you can use Atticus to format people's books. I'm giving you all the sauce today, family. So if you want to be charging people, right, if you know how to create the graphics and everything and you, you want people to pay you to be creating the formats and everything, creating the ebooks for people and all that, well, guess what? Now you have a, a tool in your arsenal that you can use to start charging people and creating the format. It does take some work. So people that don't have time to sit down and really create the whole, the whole thing and format everything. Well, they can pay you to do that, but literally Atticus slices the time in half. Okay. Don't worry about any other intricate software out there. Just go use Atticus. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same again. Okay. Hopefully you guys are getting some jams out of this presentation um, because, I mean, I'm telling you, these are the things that you want to think about, okay? Now, let's talk about selecting the best categories for your book because, remember, we want to select the best category for our book because the category will also help with your book being discovered and so that people can purchase your book. So how do you do that? A lot of times, and this is something that I personally also struggled with at the beginning, um, so one trick that you want to do, for example, right? So let's go ahead and go on Amazon. Okay. You want to go on Amazon, for example. Let's say you want to release a book on podcasting. All right. So you want to search on Amazon and see the popular books that are available on the same similar books you want to release, right? And so you want to see the popular books here. You search on Amazon. So here I'm seeing all these books. These are ads. And look at that, 455 reviews and all of that. Okay, this seems to be popular books, 455 reviews. So let's say you want to, you know, uh, look at this one, right? Uh, you click on the on the whatever book you found. And here's the trick, family. Um, right here, if you scroll down, right, just scroll down. And I'm on my desk, desktop here, family. So normally on the left here, right there, product details, right here, okay? If you listen to the podcast, please come and watch it so you can see exactly what we're talking about. I'm zooming in to see if I can um, show you guys this information in a better way. Uh, let me see here. Let's see if I can show you. There we go. So the product details shows you the category in which the book is. If you see right here, right, it tells you the bestseller rank, right? And it says this is number four, 
in podcasts and webcasts. But here's the thing. So you can click right on here and it will open right here. Now look on the left menu, right? On the left menu says any department books and it drills down to, I'm going to go ahead and highlight it right here, right? To podcasts and webcasts. So if you wanted to rank in here as well, you can go ahead, right? And this is how you find the best category for your book, right? And you see, okay, uh, because it's kind of hard if you, um, you're you in KDP to do this. So now you know all you got to do is go to computer and technology, internet, social media is the first one. Then you go all the way down to podcasts and webcasts and you list your book there. Okay? That is how you find the best categories for your book. And you want to do the same thing for the top three books in the category that you want to list your book. Family, please take the time to do this. Okay? This is very important. A lot of times people will tell you, no, uh, pay them, they'll guarantee a bestseller and they'll go ahead and put your book in a category that makes no sense, right? You don't want to do that. You don't want to put your book in a category that makes no sense because Amazon is really going down on those people that are listing their books in a category that has absolutely nothing to do with your actual book simply because you want to get a bestseller status. Don't do that, okay? Um Let's go ahead and uh, look for my book, and I'll show you. For example, here's my book, The Live Stream Blueprint. Let me click on it. And so same concept here. By the way, the audio version of the book is available. You can go ahead and get it uh, today. But if I were to scroll down here, you see the same concept, right? Uh, number 70 right here uh, in online advertising because this book is all about how to leverage live stream, right, promote your business, and establish that for to grow your business, right? And uh, digital video production um, and digital video production for Kindle store and the physical books, right? So you can click right there as well. And then you can see the category. That's how you get categories for your books, right? If you want to do similar. And so you can list your book in those categories the right way. And that pairing with the SEO tag in the title, right? Um, like we talked about earlier, that will allow you to really position your book to win, which is really amazing. Okay. Amazing stuff for you to do. And you will not regret it because people will truly start discovering your book. And now you will start growing and, you know, get an Amazon algorithm to be suggesting your book to more people. Okay. So that is how you select the best categories for your book. Okay. So that your book can be discovered by most people. Again, family, if you're getting any jam from the stuff that I'm sharing, let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you're an author, Share your book with us, right? So that people can check you out as well. We want to support. This is a community. And if you've learned anything and you appreciate it, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you didn't know that we do um, live streams usually every single week here and we give you a lot of value. So go ahead and do that. You can follow us on YouTube. The YouTube channel is my handle at JP High Tech or whichever platform you're on. Follow me and let's grow together. Um, I really, really appreciate that family. Let's go ahead and continue this. Now let's talk about marketing. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do. Market your book. And this is where some folks fall short because you really want to learn the best way to market your book. And when we're talking about marketing, you want to position your book for bestseller and want to leverage family, community, right? The why at what am I talking about? Okay, let's dive into it. The first thing I want to talk about here is family. This is what I did, right? Um, and honestly, that worked for me. Okay, so I contacted several family members. Okay, don't don't see that's the thing. Some people they want to hide, release their book once it's all available on the market, right? Uh, they want to announce on social media and say, "Hey, my book is available. Go buy it." Here's the problem, family. The first um, twenty four hours of when your book is released on Amazon is crucial for the lifespan of your book. Let me repeat that. The first 24 hours of your book, once it's released specifically on Amazon, is crucial for the lifespan of your book. So if you release your book, then you want to now go tell people. Well, people would take seven days, two weeks, a month or longer to go ahead and give your book support. 
that's the wrong way to do it. What you want to do first, right, is you want to go back before the book is even released. Um, I did that about three weeks in before my book is, is released. So three to four weeks is what you want to do, right? Um, contact your family members. Take the time to send them a message, ask for their genuine help. So I contacted my family members, right, my friends and family members, people that I trust, and I sent them a message and told them, listen, I'm releasing my very first book. I'm releasing, if you are a current author, you can tell them I'm releasing my next book, right? So I told them I'm releasing my very first book. Right? I took the time to really draft a very nice, compelling message to let them know why it's so important for me to get their support. And in exchange, I asked them that I will appreciate their genuine, honest review. In exchange for their honest review, I would like to give them a free copy, digital copy of the book. Listen to what I'm telling you, family. You have to give, even your family members and your friends, give them a reason to support you. If you just go and tell them, hey, uh, I, I, I would love your support of my book, man, that I'm releasing. They'll be like, okay, sounds good. But you didn't specifically ask them for something that you need. Here, I'm asking them specifically for a review. Positive, negative, it doesn't matter. I want their genuine feedback on the book. But I'm also telling them I would like that review to be posted the eve or the day of the book on Amazon, not anywhere else, specifically on Amazon. So what you're doing here is you're leveraging your current contact to show love and support. Now, here's the thing. Not every single person I contacted said yes to this. Some ignore my message. That's life, right? Keep it moving. Some, several said yes, right? Some told me they couldn't do it and they told me why they couldn't do it. That's fine, right? Don't take your personal family, <laughs> right? But as those people, and so what you want to do, you may have an Excel sheet of all the people you contacted, but because here's the thing, you want to contact them, right? And then if they said yes, you want to send them the manuscript, right? And then you want to set up a reminder to remind them like uh, 48 hours before, remind them to make sure to go ahead and post that review on the day of the release or a few hours before. They have to be present, right? And post that review, okay? Very, very important that you do that. So you leverage your family and they'll do that. And of course, you add to them that if they were to go as far as purchasing the actual book, it will mean the world to you and give them, give them something like, you know, um, give them something, a gift or support them a certain way. Uh, me, I publicly recognize the people that supported me. People like Chris that's in the comment section. He supported me. Chris supported me, and I'm grateful for my, my, my friend's support, right? Because I was able to position my book because be amazing folks in my network like Chris Bryant that took the time to read the book and go on Amazon. Not only that he supported me and left a review, but he followed my author page as well. You see? And people may do that. A lot of the folks that agreed to support me, a lot of them ended up buying the book. Why? Because they all shared with me that after they read the book, it excited them on really leveraging live stream to grow their business. They appreciated the value that I delivered in the book. So you got to make sure you have a, <laughs> a good book, a book that is actually delivering good value to folks. Right. That's why you cannot rush the process. You have to take the time to share this value with people so that they can truly support you. So that is with family and friends. That's the first thing you want to do. Now you want to leverage your community. If you have a community, me, I have my private community, Content Careers University. Right. So I contacted my community. If you have a subscriber base, email subscriber base or anything like that. You want to send them a message as well. You want to ask for their support for that. Okay. See who responds, who's willing to support and all of that. And keep that conversation, communication with them. Right now, see, 
Now we're about to get on social media. Now, you get on social media two weeks before, not sooner than that, because people will forget. Family, this is a strategy that I'm giving you. When you want to announce it on social media, the earliest is two weeks before. I say seven days before. That's what I did. Because we have so much going on in our lives that people will forget. So start making noise seven days, which is the time where the pre-order is available. Remember, we said the pre-order seven days prior to December 24th, right? So now you start making noise on social media and asking people to go ahead and pre-order this book. Why is it important to pre-order? Here's the thing. On Amazon, at least on, during the time of the you know taping of this live video workshop, whenever you order, you pre-order the book on Amazon, it, it shows that it has been ordered on the day of release. That's amazing. Because now, on the day of release, you're going to get a lot of reviews on your uh, book. You're going to get a lot of orders. Why? Because every single pre-order has been marked purchase on the day of release. Now, remember, in order to get bestseller status, your book needs to be the most sold book in a specific category. So because now you're getting all this purchase status on the day of release, you might end up becoming the bestseller number one on Amazon because all the pre-orders are now marking purchase, 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 purchase. So if you had, I don't know, 60 to 100 pre-orders, all those 100 pre-orders will report the day of release of your book. And on top of that, the reviews will post the day of release of the book. And on top of that, the Amazon algorithm is going to now realize that people really are purchasing this book. And you know what they're going to do? They're now going to be sharing your book to more people without you even paying it down to Amazon. You see? And that is going to allow you to not just be number one. This is what happened to me. My book was number one in multiple categories. I was number one. My hardcover was number one. My paperback was number one. My ebook was number one. At that time, uh, the audiobook was now released. We just released the audiobook this week. Now the audiobook is available. So I was number one in every single version of my book and multiple different categories for several consecutive days. Not one, not two, not three, not four. Several consecutive days. And this is the thing, family. After you do that, after you do that, and now the book has been pre-ordered. The day of the book is available. That day, let me tell you something. Midnight, right? Before that book is released, you need to be making a lot of noise everywhere. See, some people told me, are saying that, oh, uh, they don't want to be, you know, too obnoxious or they don't want to feel like they're doing too much. You know, people don't, uh, you keep repeating yourself over and over. Let me tell you something. My wife, she's a teacher. She's a college professor. And one thing that I've learned from teachers is repetition is key, right? Did you know that the average person need to see your success story at least seven times before they decide to purchase your product? Which means you got to try to convince them or prove to them that you are the right person seven times, the average person, before they decide to go ahead and purchase or look into what you're offering. So the first time they saw it, they'll be like, ah, okay. They see it again, another success story. Huh. They see it again, and up to seven times. Now, they, they feel, okay, engaged to go ahead and click on the link and check your product out. And now they're going to go ahead and purchase it. So no, you're not bothering people. No, you're not making too much noise. Sometimes, whenever you post on social media, notifications do not go to everyone th that day. Some people saw my post on the third one, on the fourth, on the fifth, on the second, you name it. And here's the thing. Whenever you post, do different type of posts. What am I talking about? Post on your story. Take a screenshot of your product. 
post it in the story. Post a video in the story. Post the reviews that people are leaving on the book in your story. Do the same thing as well for, you know, your specific, uh, go ahead and do the same thing for, you know, your, um, how you call that, your LinkedIn, your social media posts, all those things. You want to make sure that you do the same thing for those as well. This is very, very important, right? Do the same thing for those as well. So post across every single story. Post on TikTok. Even if you don't have a TikTok account, trust me, go ahead and post several videos. I say post a minimum of three videos. So at 6 a.m., super early, or before you go to bed at midnight, post one. During 12 noon, post another one. During the end of the day, post another one. Right? Do it on, on, on Instagram. Stories. Reels and a regular post. Add that to the highlights on your Instagram. I'm giving you the sauce. I'm telling you, um, <laughs> you know, family, I'm literally telling you everything you're supposed to do. Yes, it's a lot of work, but unless you do it yourself, you're going to have to hire somebody like me or my company to do it for you if you don't have the time. But it has to be done because you're self-publishing your book. You don't have huge budget, right? Unless you do, unless you have $20,000 to pay Facebook and all the other platforms to help promote your book, right? Which paying Facebook, Amazon, and all that is part of the strategy, but not spending that much to that. You're not even going to spend $1,000, okay? Unless you have all that money you want to ingest into the marketing and the promotion of your book, don't do that. Take the time to really create. And I'm talking every day. From the day the book is released, the three days that follow from the day of release, you need to be consistent in making noise and letting the whole world hear and sharing your excitement. You really have to show people how excited you are because remember, it's your book. If you can't take the time to talk about it, if you can't take the time to keep sharing your excitement, if you cannot take the time to really tell the world how honored you are about your new product, people are not going to be as excited about your product. Because if the author of the book himself is barely talking about it, well, guess what? They're going to, uh, the followers or your community or people are going to barely pay attention to the fact that you released the book. So are you ready to do the job? Are you really ready to put in the work and market this book? This is very, very important to do. Now, another thing that you want to do when it comes down to marketing your book is ads. I mentioned earlier, paying uh, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. Talking about YouTube ads. I did all of that as well. So I took the time to record a video ad and I paid Facebook, right? On Facebook, you can spend as much or as little as you want. One thing I'll tell you is if you can't spend five to $10, about $10 a day, okay? If you can do that for at least uh, 10 days, that'll be great, okay? I paid Facebook, okay? And I uploaded my ad, promoting the book, I recorded a compelling video for that. I also paid Google, right, on my AdSense account. Again, family, if you need help with all this, you're like, JP, I really need to get in a consultation. You can do that with me, no problem. We can talk about that later, but I'm giving you everything you're supposed to do on your AdSense account. Create a video ad that will play at the beginning of YouTube videos, right? That will announce that. Spend another $100 with them. Okay, now Amazon KDP themselves allows you to pay them to also promote, have a, you know, sp uh, sponsor your book as well. Pay them as well about a hundred bucks, right? hundred dollars to do this. And that's it, family. That's it for the marketing of your book. The very last part that I will tell you for this. Contact people that will allow you to come on their platform on the podcast to talk about this book. If you know any, anybody that has a podcast, if you know me and if what you wrote about falls within the ecosystem of what we uh, discuss on my channel, I will invite you over 
and I'll support you. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about, you know, supporting anyone so that they can also achieve these amazing things. Contact your friends, contact podcasters, or hire an agency if you can, that's going to allow you to be booked on several podcasts. And one thing that I want to share with you guys that I do not see a lot of people do, and this is crucial. Remember, family, Google owns YouTube. So one thing that you want to do, you want to upload reels on YouTube. And you want to make noise and announce the status of your book. When my book went um, bestseller, I instantly started uploading video on YouTube, right? Announcing that the book was bestseller, number one bestseller on Amazon. What that does is whenever people search for your book on Google, Google is going to tell people that you were number one. And the easiest way to rapidly score first place on Google with your content is leveraging YouTube. This is like a hack that you need to use today if you have not been doing that. For example, let's go on Google. Let me show you. Right? Because that's what people will do. They'll be like maybe uh, book by JP High Tech, right? If they don't remember the name of the book, right? And as you can see, you will see it right there. Actually, let me change the view uh, for this so you guys can see um, if you're watching this so you guys can see better uh, my, you know, page here. There we go. Right? Right there. Right? They'll put in, as you can see, you see it right there, Amazon. Barnes and Noble. Let me zoom in for the, a little more for the folks that are like, JP, that's a little too small, right? Amazon's the first thing you see. You see Barnes and Noble. You see it right here on everyone.com. This is my website, which is another tip, right? So what I did, I went ahead and purchased a domain name that spells the name of my book. The name of my book here is The Live Stream Blueprint. So I purchased the domain name, The Live Stream Blueprint.com. OK, and so I created a Web page on my website that links to that domain name. And I started using that in every description to make it easy for people to find the book. So if you want to purchase my book, all you have to do is go to the website, the live stream blueprint dot com. Right. And so that helps Google in indexing your different pages and showing people about the book. Right. And make that page SEO friendly. Right. And call it the live stream blueprint. Call it the name of your book. Remember the SEO tag in the title of your book. Right. Put it right there. Right. Amazon Audible. Right. Um, is is everywhere. Right. Is everywhere. Or people will come and they'll type the name of the book. Now, let me see the live stream. Blueprint. By JP High Tech. Right. Or let me actually put the live stream blueprint book. For you guys to see something. Look at that. You see? It's available on Walmart, everywhere. And th that's what's going to happen. Okay? And one thing that's amazing, as you can see, is on Apple and all of that, right? One thing that's amazing is Google also pulls your social media posts about this same thing. Look, I was talking about the YouTube right now, right? Look, now YouTube, Google is saying... Number one bestseller on Amazon, the live stream blueprint. This is a video that I uploaded myself. Right? <laughs> Look, this is my LinkedIn post. My new book, the live stream blueprint. Right? Google will pull all of this. This is another LinkedIn post right here. Right? This is my book available on draft to digital This is what you need to do, family, so that your book is literally... Available everywhere. Everywhere you can think of. Having your book available there. Okay? So leverage YouTube. Upload a minimum of three videos on YouTube that only contains the title of your book. And since your title is SEO friendly, whenever people are searching for something that has nothing to do with your book, for example, my book, when people search for the live stream or growing with live stream, or stuff like that, my book, my video about my book is suggested to them. And so now they watch the video and they realize, oh, there's a recommended document that can help me learn how to grow my business with uh, live stream. Let me go purchase the book, right? But they were not searching for a book. They were simply searching for watching a video about how to, you know, leverage that specific topic, right? How to do that specific thing. And since it's in the title of my book, guess what? YouTube is also suggesting that to people. 
Okay, this is what you need to do, family, in order to position yourself as number one. Position your book so that you're a bestseller. Now, we've got to the end of this, family. I appreciate you guys being here. Let me go ahead and give a shout out to Keonti Lomax. What's good? She's right there on Instagram. Appreciate you joining us there. I have DJ Premium 5. What's good? Thanks for joining us here. Robert, thanks you for joining us here. Um, you know, First Lady Cree, thank you for joining us here. Uh, Charles Jackson, thank you so much for staying um, during the entire presentation. Family, if you're like, yo, JP, I need help. <laughs> I want to get in the private consultation with you. I need extra help on getting these things done the right way. Well, guess what? You can do that. You know, you can do that by just going to my website, jphitech.com, right? For slash booking or connect at jphitech.com is my email. My social media handle is at jphitech. Let's go ahead and connect right there, family. I am always, I am always looking for ways to share with you guys knowledge, right? Um, share with you guys all the jams, everything that I learned. I really want to empower people. And this is the last workshop of 2020. We're going to the new year. So this is the last workshop of this year. We're going to the new year uh, really, really with amazing things. And I appreciate you guys staying here with me. Share this video with a friend or family member that needs to know this type of things. And of course, subscribe, follow us for more things because we're about to level things up. And thank you guys for joining us right there on Instagram, right? You guys already know how we do it. And family, this is the end of the show, right? Uh, we're about to say goodbye. And of course, you be safe. Like I always say, shalom. See you next time, family. Bye. What's up, y'all? This is your man, Lionel. I am super excited that I had the opportunity to work with my man, JP Hightech. Man, JP was absolutely fabulous. I mean, from start to finish, he was instrumental in helping me to understand not only what my mission, what my vision is, but how to communicate that visually. So one of the examples I give you real quick is that JP helped me a lot with my look with the LUT. That's how I started out with JP. As you can see right now, I look overexposed, too much light. It's spilling over into the background. You can look really, you can see the chair in the middle to boom. This right here gave me my natural skin color, natural texture. Uh, just a just a wonderful, wonderful uh, a piece of work work with JP. So what I really liked about him is that he not only helped me to show visually what it is I wanted to do, but he actually walked me through the process to hear what it is I was trying to do. And then he spent over Four hours, think about that, four hours working with me one-on-one -on -one to help me get it looking to where I wanted to look, where I could invite guests onto my platform as well. So I highly recommend JP High Tech, not only for your, your personal branding and your website and all of those things, but I recommend JP because he's personable, he's direct to show you exactly where you need to go and how you need to go there. But he's also super professional from start to finish. I see professional professionalism. So I highly recommend JP and I know you guys will like him too. If you have any questions for me, let me know. But definitely JP is the man we work with. If you have any questions, let me know. Peace.